Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to 4Wheel Drive TV. We've got a bumper episode including a major installation of a winch, so let's get stuck straight into it. Fred lightly, keep it safe, play hard. G'day, I'm Nick Manel from ARB at Penrith. We're here today with an open day to celebrate our first birthday. As you can see, there's still quite a few people here. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. It's a great event. Lots of people have come through today. It's good to put something on and give something back to the four-wheel drive community. Hello there, this is Karen from ARB Penrith. It's been a great day. Lots of lovely customers visiting us today for ARB Penrith's first birthday. We've got people who have come out of Brisbane and Melbourne to come and help with product information and the service today, and it's been a great day. We've opened the gates at nine this morning. We're meant to finish up at three, but while the people are still here and the info needs to be given, we're here to help people. It's a great opportunity for people to look at the range of vehicles we've got on display in the car park and the products on these vehicles, and also to have a look at this great range of products and advice that is available today. The people here are also able to speak to a lot of specialists who can give a lot of expert advice on products and vehicles and the four-wheel drive industry in general. We've had a great day here today. There's been a huge diversity of people. People have travelled a long way to come down. We've had kids and families and old people, caravanners, the whole lot. It's been a great family day. The children had a great time on the jumping castle. It's been a jumping castle for the kids. Dom's looked after that and been crowd control all day and it's been running from before nine o'clock and they're having a ball. This is a free event we put on for the four wheel drive community. The funds from the sausage sizzle and drinks out the back, that's going straight back to the four wheel drive club as part of our thanks to them for supporting us. The four wheel drive club's done over 300 sausage sandwiches, so if that gives an idea of how many people have been here, it's been a great day. As you can understand, there's a huge amount of organisation and planning that goes into these events, and I'd like to thank all my staff and everybody who's turned up to help us. Especially, I'd like to thank my wife Karen and son Dom. They both got out of bed before five this morning, been on their feet all day. Simon, I know you got up early to get out of Melbourne. I would like to thank the people who've turned up and supported us, and the customers who've turned up, and the people who've come just to find some information. Being as it was our first birthday, we arranged chocolate mud cake for Nick. We had three big cakes, and we handed them out through the whole crowd. I believe Simon had most of one of those cakes, but no, there was enough to go around for everyone else. We celebrated with a birthday cake. It's just a great day out. The weather's just amazing. Congratulations to Nick and the crew for a job well done. Hey, happy birthday. Thanks everyone for coming. It's been a great day. You're watching Four Wheel Drive TV. All right, we've got our top of the range, nine and a half thousand pound Boss Winch, courtesy of Mean Mother here, ready to go in. But to get any accessory onto a four wheel drive, you need tools, and good quality tools is the best place to start. And this is an awesome kit for a four wheel drive. Packed up nice and neat, it's a good size. But most importantly, it is jam-packed with just about every tool you're going to need when you're out there on the tracks, and it's certainly got everything we need to install this winch today. So good quality tools is the first place to start when you're a home mechanic. Now you, Fix It and Force Tools will be looking after us during 2013, but the big news for you, the viewer, is that we may be giving a couple of these sets away. So watch out for some big news relating to some tool giveaways, thanks to you, Fix It and Force, across 4 Drive TV and 4 Drive Pro Tips in 2013. For now, let's get on with this winch install. First of all, something very important I want to talk about is line pull or the rated capacity of the winch. This Boss winch here is rated at 9,500 pounds. Now most people think that that's its maximum pulling capacity, but it isn't. 
With the mean mother winches, that is what we call an SWL, or a safe working load. So whilst other winches may be rated at 9,000, 9,500 pounds, and that is their maximum capacity, the mean mother winches are rated at a safe working load. And I know for a fact that this winch here, rated at 9,500 pounds, will actually pull to 12,000 pounds without a problem. Now when we're talking about those maximum loads, we are talking about the first layer of rope on the drum. That is where you get the maximum torque, the maximum capacity out of the winch. As you go up in higher layers, you do drop in capacity. But the way these winches are rated, a safe working load, it's far more powerful than other winches, and that's a key point to understand how winches are rated. The next thing I like about these winches is that you'll notice here that the tie bar area here actually sits much higher on this winch than it does on other winches. Now why is that important? Well, the tie bars are important firstly to stabilise the winch to make sure that it doesn't flex at all, which could cause problems. But having the tie bars actually higher creates more space between the drum and the tie bars, which means you can fit more rope onto the drum itself. More importantly though, when your drum rope does become tangled or knotted, you've still got plenty of clearance up here, so it won't actually rub and scrape and damage the rope or the winch, so that also is very important. But a set of tie bar extenders take that a step further. So these we're gonna fit up now, we'll sit up on top here, will give us another 25 millimetres of clearance, which means more rope again on this winch. So this here is a low mount winch, and I've got 40 metres of rope here ready to go on, so this will be an awesome combination for when we're out there four wheel driving. Let's get these tie bar extensions fitted. Well, how simple and easy is that? We've got another 25 millimetres of clearance there for the rope, a great idea. Next, we need to adjust where the clutch handle sits to make it suit our style of bull bar and the way that this winch will fit in. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive wading depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. Finally, the driving light you've always wanted is here, boasting a class-leading free-form reflector and a super-tough polycarbonate lens and ABS housing. The all-new Nava Ultimate 225 is a revolutionary driving light, available in halogen, halogen blue and HID, in both spread and pencil beams, and supplied complete with a plug-and-play wiring harness and polycarbonate lens protectors. These Aussie Outback Tough Lights outshine the competition. Visit nava.com.au for more information and make the switch to the brightest lights in town. With nearly 100 years experience in designing and manufacturing heavy duty filtration, Donaldson is one of the most trusted brands in the market and our filters meet or exceed OEM specification. Originally developed for four wheel drives on mine sites, Donaldson's range of four wheel drive filters will perform in even the toughest environment, giving you peace of mind that you are buying the best and the most reliable filter for your vehicle and backed by a full manufacturer's warranty. Donaldson, tough filters for tough environments. When we install the Mean Mother winch into our ARB bull bar, it's going to be tilted back so that the front face here will bolt in to the front of the winch. That means that the clutch handle here is going to be right at the back of the winch and very hard to reach. We would like to be able to access it through the top vents here, which means that the clutch handle needs to be rotated around to the front here. Let's get that done nice and easily. Okay, with all the bolts undone, it's a simple case of loosening off this housing, have it in the neutral or out position, rotating it into where we want it, and bolting it back in. Here we go. Rotate it into the position where you want it to sit. Make sure the holes line up. Also a good time to check the gasket. And the gasket's in reasonably good condition, but Mean Mother again, include a spare gasket in the kit if you need it. 
line your holes up, replace all of the bolts, and we'll be ready to go. Probably a good idea while you're doing this to get even tension across the gearbox cap. So zigzag across the box as you're doing up the bolts. It'll spread the load nice and evenly and make sure you get a good square seal. And the final stage is tensioning every screw down to about the same tension. Like anything mechanical, do not over tighten them. You'll simply strip or break the bolts and that's not a good thing. All right, that all done, we're now ready to install the winch. But first of all, I'd like to talk about the electricals, which again, there are some fantastic features with the winches. These Carlingford or rocker style switches make things even easier to operate your winch. We've got one here that isolates the winch, so basically turns it on. And another one here, momentary on for in, momentary on for out. And it's a simple case of operating the winch from inside the cabin, too easy. The next thing I'd like to show you is right here under the bonnet. I think it's pretty cool. With the Boss range of Mean Mother winches, the hand controller comes nice and neatly contained in this plastic bag. Now you might think it's silly to keep your hand controller here under the bonnet, but I like to have the hand controller hardwired into the winch always. Under the bonnet here, it's easy to access. You'll never lose it. And contained in this nice waterproof bag, you'll always find somewhere neat to tuck it away in your engine bay. Have a look at the hand controller itself though. more like something you'd find in an industrial warehouse. It's certainly a heavy duty switch. You've got your in out buttons clearly labeled. And as a waterproof unit, it certainly will survive the rigors of being under the bonnet here. One of the most important parts of winch operation is getting clean power to it. But that also means getting clean earth to it. Don't just rely on the earth of your bull bar to earth your winch. On this switch here, we're gonna be running an earth cable directly from the housing of the motor straight back all the way to the earth of the battery. It's the only way to wire in a winch. Now mounted up in here and protected by the wing of the ARB bull bar, we've got the Mean Mother solenoid box. It's a minimal contact heavy duty solenoid that is certainly up to the case, but it also comes in a heavy duty box with heavy duty fittings for the winch controller. And we've wired this in mounted to the vehicle. So it's well protected here. It's nice and safe and can't get damaged. Next step, our final step, let's get this winch installed. In between episodes of your favourite TV show, visit fourwheeldrivetv.com.au for the latest in 4x4 news, links, prizes and videos. Stay in touch with myself and Danny and receive regular updates, promos and photos via our Facebook page. And visit youtube.com forward slash fourwheeldrivetvtube for our latest 4x4 videos. There's three great ways to stay up to date and in touch with our growing four-wheel drive community in between episodes. Hello guys, my name's Sam, down here at the Perth Full Driving Adventure Show with my 80 series. I competed in Tough Trucks last year for 2012, hopefully 2013, I want to be back there again. Got a little bit of modifications to do to it, but our nominations are in. Be ready and raring to go, so much fun last year, can't wait for it. We've got to modify the front grille to get the headlights back in to comply with the rules. Other than that, I'm pretty much ready to rock and roll. The trip to Tough Trucks is a long trip but worth it. We love the terrain over there. There's not too many comps here in Perth at the moment. So we come over there because it is the biggest comp in Australia. 
the people that are there are insane. The amount of people you get through the gates as well. The atmosphere, as I said last year, I could not stop laughing. I rolled my car twice, but as for me, my navigator Matt had an absolute blast. Biggest comp, just brilliant bunch of people. Brilliant bunch of people. Can't wait to get over there. It's definitely worth the three and a half days of driving non-stop to get there. Hoping to get four cars over there this year. We had two last year. If we can get four over, it's going to be a brilliant road trip over there. Plus, try and demonstrate what Perth has to offer. Got a good mix of cars. One of them still getting built at the moment, which I think will mix it up with the big boys. I'll go over there, have some fun, as well as a couple of the other guys over there. It's a big, big effort for us to come over. It's basically three and a half days of solid driving time to get there. It is a big effort. So if there are any other sponsors out there wanting to help us out to get over there, fuel-wise, doesn't matter what it is, basically to help us get there, it would be much appreciated because it is. It's a long way, but all worth it in the end. I'm hoping to see you all over there. Can't wait. Get the big journey on the road, and yeah, hope to see you there, 2013. Thank you very much. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometer warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. I'm Chris Weston, off-road racer and owner of Off-Road Rush, and I wouldn't race on anything else than my Mickey Thompson tyres. I trust my Mickey Thompson at high speed. They can handle wet or dry without any trouble. And that means I can keep racing while the competitors stop to change tyres. Mickey Thompson? No wonder they call them legendary. Call 1300 Mickey for your nearest dealer. Total recovery and extraction device, TREAD. Whether it's sand, mud, snow, rocks or any tough terrain, TREAD is the ultimate all-in-one recovery device. Designed and manufactured in Australia for rugged performance, TREAD will let you explore with confidence. Available in a variety of colours and two easy to use sizes, TREAD is the true Aussie traction board you've been waiting for. For more information, visit meanmother.com.au. Hi, my name's Michael. This is my Transformer. It's a Holden Jackaroo 92, short wheelbase two-door. I've had it for about two years now. Got it totally stocked, and since then I've done a lot of upgrades to it, including the bull bar, 12,000 pound winch, three CB radios, spotties, 32 inch muddies, plus a set of 31 road tyres, all terrains at home. The snorkel, dual battery system, two inch body lift, one inch suspension lift. In the back there's custom built shelving with the fridge in it, custom built overhead console with all the radios and a map holder in it, jerry can holder on the rear, a few other minor bits and pieces, random mods. 
main areas I go up is around the Thompson State Forest, up towards Wood Point, Lacola, anywhere where there's some good tracks to get out and do some hiking, fishing, camping. Just get out and enjoy it all. If you'd like to join us for our next Your Rig trip, then email myself with your details. Each weekly winner takes home a cap and stubby holder courtesy of All Sat Phone, an Any Sharp edge sharpener and scissors thanks to Keesler Knives, a promo pack courtesy of ARB including Forby the plush toy, a travel mug, a Forby drink bottle, the new ARB cap, a pair of emergency travel socks, the latest ARB jacket, and a set of valve caps to bling your rig. There's an ARB Penrith stubby holder, a pen and cap thanks to Berrimer Diesel and DP chip, a massive map of Australia, a GDT Simpson Desert map, and Travel Atlas, courtesy of HEMA Maps Australia, a Manel Motors stubby holder, a USB rechargeable torch thanks to Nava, the History of Land Cruiser DVD, courtesy of Terrain Tamer, a U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit and tyre ratchet set. There's a copy of Dirt Cop magazine, South Pacific Bow Hunter magazine and Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine. A set of the Australian design expander pegs, an up and go breakfast replacement courtesy of Sanitarium, a set of four wheel drive TV medium stickers, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer and an Australian designed Aussie drink mate. A Black Widow travel mate tyre repair kit or a Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit. The Electric Blue span set snap strap and it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. Thanks to Simon and Rana for a great day out. Thanks to the sponsors as well and thanks for checking out my rig. I surely get a lot of fun out of it and I hope you guys enjoy checking it out as well. Hi, I'm David from Responsive Engineering. A misconception is that the factory filter will stop water. Not the case. Whilst these filters are very good at what they're designed for, particle filtration, they're not designed to handle large amounts of water at the flow rates of common rail vehicles. We need in this situation a standalone product that is there to detect water and has no effect on the vehicle's fuel flow rates. Waterwatch is a very accurate water detection system for modern vehicles. It separates the water from the diesel and once the amount of water in the catchment bowl is five to seven mils, it sets off an alarm. This gives the driver a time to safely get off the road and then investigate, perhaps he has to drain water watch, at which point it will reset and he can carry on. Where does the water come from? Water is generally obtained when refilling the vehicle. Most refilling station tanks have a certain amount of water in the bottom of them. When the refilling tank fills these tanks, it stirs up the whole contents of the fuel bowels of the tank. You and I come along afterwards and inadvertently put some of that suspended water in our fuel system. From our experience, this is more common in the city, given that it relates very much to how often the tankers are filling. In a remote place, we may see a tank only once a week, but in the city, it's a daily operation. Waterwatch can be fitted to any diesel vehicle, whether it be passenger vehicles, trucks, machines, earth moving generator sets. Waterwatch is reasonably easy fitted. It can be fitted by a person at home if they're familiar with the fitting of a set of driving lights. This is the sort of task we have. Waterwatch is fitted between the fuel tank and the factory filter. Once it's in, it requires no maintenance until such time as an alarm sounds, at which point we will need to drain it. Waterwatch is easy to install, easy to maintain, accurate. It can save you potentially thousands of dollars and the potential to stop a dangerous situation. It should be in every diesel vehicle. Once again, I'm David, thank you. First of all, we need to remove this little cover plate here. We'll have a nice little hole to slide the winch up inside the bar. Now this part is where you're going to need a little bit of muscle. We've got to manhandle the winch up into the bull bar, hold it in position while my happy co-worker there will find the right bolts to bolt the top mounts into place. This part can be quite fiddly, holding the winch in place. Luckily these Mean Mother winches aren't that heavy, especially if you're using synthetic rope or you've got the rope off the drum, the winch is certainly far lighter and easier to handle. Remember, it's important to do the top bolts first because the lower bolts are going to also hold the fair lead. All right, we've got the winch in. It's now time for the fair lead. 
Now, another thing that I love are these awesome alloy fair leads. Now, with this big cutout we've got here in the ARB bull bar for rollers, this alloy plate will absolutely fit in nicely here. And it looks awesome. Let's get it bolted in. Now, be very careful when doing up these nuts, the electrical connectors. First of all, make sure they're not live and you don't short yourself out by touching a spanner on part of the vehicle but also don't over tighten them. The bolts we're hooking onto here go straight through into the motor housing and have soldered contacts inside. You can easily snap those soldered contacts off and that's the end of your winch. Well, that's the winch in and all the wiring done. I'll get my assistant to head round, jump in the car. Let's see if we've got it wired correctly. All right, our final stage is to put on our Dyneema rope. Now it's critical that when you are buying a winch with synthetic rope that you are getting the real deal. So make sure you do your research, get the real Dyneema. It is certainly the stuff that is built tough for Australian winching conditions. And when you want it to last, you want the original. So Dyneema is the only way to go. Run the end of your rope through the mouth of the winch. Line up your hole in the drum, which is threaded and ready to receive your grub screw. A Little bit fiddly to get the grub screw in and going. Now remember this grub screw is not designed to take load. It's just there to locate the rope in place. And tensioning the first layer of cable onto the winch is absolutely imperative. That is what takes the load of your rope. And we'll keep your rope on the drum. Now, as mentioned, it's the first layer of rope that will take the load. So it is imperative that this first layer goes on neatly, but also with a lot of load on it, as much as you can get onto it. It's also good to have a good quality cable protector. As you can see, we've got a nice thick rope protector over the cable here in black, and that will protect it, especially on the drum, the first layer. Let's get that done nice and easily. Well, there you have it, the end of the installation of our Boss Mean Mother winch. Well, for now, we're signing off, but remember, if you've got a four-wheel drive, get it set up right, get out there and use it.